Hey, this is Dee from GameXTC, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use Retrobat, which is probably one of the best emulators that I've come across. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. Finish him. So what is Retrobat? Retrobat is a software distribution for Windows designed to make it easy to set up and use emulators for classic gaming consoles and other retro systems. Essentially, it's an all-in-one that allows you to play titles on the NES, Mega Drive, PlayStation, Amiga, the list is endless. Right, now I've got that over with, let's get on with it. Now as usual, all the links are provided in the description. Now the first thing you wanna do is head over to Retrobat's website and click download Retrobat. At the time of recording this video, the latest version was 7.1. On this screen, you want to select download now. You then wanna scroll down until you reach the download part of the page. You then wanna download the latest version. You may get the pop-up that says you cannot download this securely. If you do, select the ellipsis menu commonly referred to as the three dots. Select keep and then keep anyway. This will then initiate the download. You'll then receive another pop-up advising you that this application is not commonly downloaded. You can select see more to see if there's any more text. Otherwise, you click the three dots Select keep, show more, and then keep anyway. By doing so, this will complete the download. Now that's complete, you can see the setup file on my desktop. So let's go ahead and double click it. You select your language and then okay, then next. I accept, then next, click next. Select your destination folder, then next. Select your components, then next. Select whether you want a desktop shortcut, then next. And then finally, install. Now the installation process will take a couple of minutes and once it's complete, select finish. You can then delete your installation file and we can continue with the setup. But before we continue, let's launch Retrobat and see how it looks natively. As you can see, not all the consoles are listed here. So we need to add our ROMs for them to appear. So let me walk you through exactly how you do this. So you now need to close Retrobat and open up two folders. One of the folders should be your games, which you can see on the left hand side of the screen. And on the right hand side, you can see the Retrobat application folder. So the first thing we're gonna do is add some games. In your Retrobat folder, select ROMs and select the console which you have games for. In my case, I've got Dreamcast, so I'm gonna select Dreamcast. And then within my emulator games folder, I'm gonna drag all the games that I have for Dreamcast into the Retrobat Dreamcast folder. Now I do apologize that you can only see numbers when I selected my Dreamcast folder, and that's because I've been using GDMU. If you wanna know more about GDMU, please feel free to check out our other video. For the purpose of this walkthrough, I'm gonna add folder 57, which is the game Resident Evil. So I go into folder 57 and I drag the game into this Retrobat folder. I also have GameCube games, so I'm gonna do exactly the same process for GameCube. In my Retrobat folder, I select GameCube, and in my Emulator Games folder, I go into GameCube and I drag my GameCube games into the Retrobat GameCubes folder. So I'm gonna repeat this process for a few other games. I'm gonna do it for the Mega Drive, N64, and PS2. Now, some of the consoles do require a BIOS. For example, PS2 requires a BIOS for the games to work. If this is the case, what you wanna do is in your Retrobat folder is select a BIOS, and then select your console. In this example, is the PCSX2, and then select the BIOS folder. You then drag your BIOSes into this folder. Now that's done, let's launch Retrobat and see how it looks now. As you can see, all the games that we've added, the console that we've added it for, now appear on our UI. Now apologies for scrolling through this quite quickly, but you can see that it works as expected. But what can we do from here? Firstly, it's worth mentioning that if you have a PS5 controller, PS4 controller, Xbox One controller connected to your PC, then this emulator will automatically map the buttons and detect the controller. So, essentially you can either use your keyboard, mouse or controller to navigate through the commands and buttons on the screen and through the game. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my BIOSes work for my PS2. So let me go into it and as you can see, the UI isn't that great. 
We don't have any cover art, but we can see the games there. So let's go ahead and load it up. Now, as this is the first time that I'm playing this game, you will receive a warning. This warning will just let you know that the BIOS files and the game may not work correctly and whether or not you want to launch it anyway. Now, as we have already added our BIOSes and we know that our game does work perfectly fine, let's click yes. You will then receive another pop-up advising you that the emulator PCSX2 is not installed. Select yes. The download will initiate and once it's completed, the game will launch. As we can see that the PS2 one is working as expected, let's head over to Mega Drive and check whether or not those games work as well. So I've selected Adventures of Batman and Robin. It takes a few seconds to load and once you've given it that time, you can see that it has worked as expected. Now, although it works perfectly fine, I'm not entirely happy with the setup of this emulator. We don't have any cover art and our games seem to have a border. So let me show you how to jazz up the simulator. For your cover art, you need to head over to Screen Scraper. You select Register, scroll down to the bottom of the page, select a username, input a new password, confirm your password, and also input your email address. You'll then receive a notification letting you know that your registration has been successfully completed. You then head back over to Retrobat, and with your mouse, keyboard, or your controller, you select Menu, Scraper, Scraper Settings, Scroll down to the bottom and input your username and password that you just created. You then select Scrape Now and in the top right corner, it'll give you a status update to let you know which cover art is currently updating. Once the process is complete, you go back into your main menu, but this time we go into Game Settings, Update Game Lists, and then select Yes. Retrobat would then go into a sync process and if you go back into your emulator and your consoles, you will see that the cover art will now appear. Now that we've done the cover art, I want to remove the border around the screen when you're playing your game. Unfortunately, you'll have to apply this to each individual console type if you want this to apply to all of them. You select your console, option, scroll down to advanced system options, decorations, and then none. Whilst you're on this page, if you also wanna play your game in full screen mode, you can go to game aspect ratio and select 16 by nine. You can then launch your title and see how it looks. I didn't choose the 16 by nine option, but you can see that my borders have been removed. The final thing I want to show you is the ability of being able to change your theme. On the main page of the emulator, you want to select menu, scroll down to updates and downloads, select themes, and then you'll be presented with the number of themes that you'll be able to download. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna download AI Hyper 2 Zero. In the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see the progress of your downloaded theme. Once your download is completed, you want to select menu, user interface, and then theme set. You'll then be able to choose between the themes that you've downloaded. So let's select our new theme. And as you can see, the look and feel has changed. So guys, if you found this video useful, please feel free to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.